What is going on YouTube? My name is Lucas and today I started doing some more research on Workhorse. Obviously, we are on the verge of potentially getting the United States Postal Service contract. But as an investor, I want to dive deeper. I want to see what this company is obviously doing past the United States Postal Service contract because to be honest with you, that is not the only thing that is going to make this company successful. It has to be something well after. So I started doing some research and obviously I found some information and I want to provide that information to you guys. So if you're interested in Workhorse, because I know you are, stay tuned right after this. Before we saddle up and start riding this horse, I ask that you guys smash that subscribe button, smash that like button, comment down below. Now it's time to giddy up on into this video. I am super excited to bring you guys this video. I really am. And I think that this is some very valuable information beyond the United States Postal Service contract. And the reason I say that is just because with them being able to extend the range of their trucks to 160 miles. It's absolutely amazing. And so obviously we understand that the United States Postal Service contract isn't necessarily going to need the longevity in a way because it's a very quick stop and go, stop and go, stop and go type, you know, delivery service. That is the last mile. But what's going to be significant is all the other companies that are now going to be able to climb on board with this company because of them being able to extend the range of their battery. I mean, 160 miles for the likes of, you know, an inner city or even just an urban area delivery. If you look at it, in all honesty, the likes of a FedEx now, and I did a video today on FedEx. And when I did that video, I started thinking to myself, you know, obviously in, we're moving forward in a direction in which we're going zero emission. Gavin Newsom, the governor of California came out and really kind of hit home that you know they would like to be EV or zero emission and pushing for that by 2035 and they honestly plan on stop selling all new gas vehicles by 2045 with that being said a lot of these last mile delivery services are going to have to start transitioning over and California isn't the only one that's doing this when the carb announced all these you know regulations and things that they put in place there's numerous states that started following with them and then there's other countries that are starting to do that and you know obviously i've talked workhorse could be an international company so it's very significant that you know there's other countries following suit with the same thing as california but back to what i was saying so with all that being said companies like fedex are going to have to start climbing on board with the idea of going zero emission and they're gonna have to start seeking out a company that is well the best at that and that is workhorse so with that being said fedex may reach out at some point and want to start testing vehicles and start seeing what options they have with that being said workhorse is by far the best option as of right now they have all the approvals from the epa they have carb approvals. I mean, they are just taking steps and steps ahead of any competition in this field. So, you know, the likes of a FedEx may reach out. We continue to talk about, you know, refrigeration being an option. Well, with them extending and going 160 miles, that is only going to help those styles of trucks, you know, create and do those deliveries. So the likes of a Walmart, the likes of Kroger, you got to think, there's a lot of small businesses out there that can utilize this style of truck. You know, you got all the, the alcohol deliveries like Budweiser and, you know, Anheuser-Busch and obviously, you know, Coors and, and those types of things. I mean, all kinds of stuff. Red Bull, energy drinks. There is a ton of options that can just go into the last mile delivery aspect by using these trucks and i just think it's very important that we start seeing the bigger picture we start thinking ahead past the united states postal service contract especially if we're long-term investors obviously the ones that are trying to just get in get out because of the united states postal service contract you know that's fine but for us long-term investors we have to start thinking 
what is past what is beyond this contract because yes it is going to do us well 6.3 billion dollars for a small time company and then the amount of manufacturing that's going to come is huge trust me i'm not saying it's not but then at some point that becomes old news the the income starts to dip off and you're going to have to start generating more revenue in a way you're going to have to continue to produce trucks because eventually those 125,000 to 150,000 vehicles are made and they're gone and they're shipped off and you you United States Postal Service contract is using those. So what is next? In my opinion, this is where we're headed. We got to start thinking drone related as well. That's another thing that Workhorse is very, you know, well positioned in. 7 patents on the on the Horsefly and that is a last mile delivery aspect. We know that. And so the likes of a FedEx could start looking into it. UPS, we obviously know UPS has been with Workhorse in some manner for seven years now. So there's a lot of ties, a lot of connections there. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to swing over here and I'm going to provide you a piece of information from an article that I found on Yahoo that really kind of helps out support with what I'm saying. Um, and I honestly, it, it's absolutely amazing to me. So in July, the company announced that it had been awarded Executive Order A445-0003 from the California Air Resources Board, CARB, which we know this. Uh, it designates the C-Series trucks as zero-emission vehicles in the state of California. As part of Executive Order approval process, each vehicle under consideration was required to be tested through the Environmental Protection Agency's EPA Prescribed Urban Driving Cycle and Highway Driving Cycle. So right there, that tells you that Workhorse is, as of right now, seems like to be the only one that has gotten this executive order approval. So continuing on, this is from Dwayne Hughes. Achieving a 160 mile range has been a goal of ours in the last mile delivery sector at large for quite some time, as it significantly expands the addressable market for our solutions. Right there, he hits on it. It expands you know the addressable market it opens the door for a lot of options we're not just narrowing our you know our window to the united states postal service contract this gives other companies other businesses the opportunity to start partnering with them and creating you know some good partnerships deep networks uh so continuing on it says that uh, Workhorse Dwayne, uh, CEO Dwayne Hughes, as the only purpose-built last mile EV delivery truck with a light weighting design, we are competitively positioned to be more efficient with a smaller battery pack configuration compared to other EVs and can handle the stop and start nature of the last mile delivery more effectively than traditional ICE. By extending vehicle range and keeping production costs in line with competitors, we have opened up an extended range of possibilities in suburban and rural locations. Additionally, the equally important, the related charging and infrastructure costs are now lowered, which will further reduce the total cost of ownership for potential customers. So I do think that he's kind of hinting right there that, look, we're, we're one of the best, and for us to be able to stop and go, I mean, that kind of tells you a lot about the United States Postal Service contract right there. But then he's talking about it opens up even more possibilities due to the range that we're capable of doing now. So, like I said, guys, I think that there is a lot of information to draw from this. And I think it's extremely important as long-term investors to see what we're, you know, what this company is doing for the long term. I still, like I said, I did a live stream last night on YouTube. Like I said in that, I don't feel that the Hitachi deal is being really, I guess, appreciated as much as it should be right now. And I think we'll start to see it as this company continues to grow and go down the line. But I think the Hitachi deal is just absolutely amazing. And it's going to help this company in so many ways. It's, I mean, they have so much experience in so many different sectors that this company is going to benefit from Hitachi in so many ways. It really is. We have come to my favorite part of any video, and that is chart breaking down time. So let's saddle on up and get over here into Workhorse. Uh, the market is currently open, um, so these numbers could fluctuate. But as of right now, it opened at $25.60. It's high for the day. It's $26.96. It's low is $24.85. It's volume as of right now is $12.43 million. It's market cap $2.631 billion. 
52 week high is $30.99, 52 week low is $1.31, and its average volume is 26.79 million. And when I did this picture, it was uh, down 1.02% and sitting at $25.02. Now we're looking at a one month chart, and on September 7th, is basically when the trend started in the upward direction and it, it was a monster run we did hit that 52 week high of thirty dollars and 99 cents it was an amazing run the dip off obviously came with just natural you know sell-offs and just the market being down as a whole and then like i've said in, in previous videos previous ev videos you know when the head of your sector in tesla who is an absolute powerhouse Reports on battery day, some amazing news, but it wasn't just instant gratification. It wasn't going to happen tomorrow. People saw it as a negative aspect and, you know, Tesla went down. So when that happened, naturally the EV sector goes down as well. That just happens. But then since then, we kind of responded back a little bit, climbed back. And I think a lot of this too is really dependent upon the United States Postal Service contract and just the anticipation of it happening. You know, I put out that I expect it happen uh, on the week of October 14th. My actual date that I'm predicting um, is October 14th. I don't have any inside source. That's just my prediction. Um, and I stated last night in my live stream. The reason I'm predicting this is because the coronavirus pushed back the decision to, you know, narrow down who's still involved with the contract. And that got pushed back to the July 12th, 13th, or 14th, one of those days. When that happened, there's a 90 day window at which they have to make the decision, I believe. And if you do the 90 days from that July 12th, 13th or 14th, that puts you roughly around the October 12th, 13th or 14th deadline. Um, so I do think that they have that window to really kind of make the decision and announce it. I understand everyone's anticipation of the announcement being made on the end of the fiscal year, starting the new fiscal year. I do think that there are some signs pointing to Workhorse getting portions of the deal, um, but you know, as far as it being announced, that's my that's my prediction. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this video, and hopefully, you guys drew some information from it. Because as long-term investors, we do have to look beyond the United States Postal Service contract, and we have to see what else this company is going to start getting its hands in, because that's what's going to continue to make this company grow continue to expand and cause the stock price to go in the upward direction. And you guys know how I do it. If you like this video, smash that like button. It helps out tremendously. And if you enjoy the content, cause I'm gonna keep the content flowing, subscribe to my YouTube channel. And as always, have a good day.